Hello there. My name is Sandy Clifton and I have a food blog and it's called Simply Happy Foodie and you can find it at simplyhappyfoodie.com. You can also find me on Facebook and Pinterest and all the usual places. Uh, so recently we had um, a lot of people purchasing Instant Pots. Most of you are first time users and today I'm going to show you how to do the water test. Now what the water test is, is literally just a test where we pressure cook some water and that's to show you that your pot is working, that it does come to pressure and everything functions properly. And it also helps you start to get familiar with some of the functionality of your Instant Pot. So let's go ahead and get started, okay? So when you first get your pot, there really isn't a whole lot that you have to worry about assembling. Uh, it's gonna come in different pieces. You're gonna get some you know, plastic spoons and you're gonna get a little uh, metal rack that goes in here and everything. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about the lid right now. So pressure cookers are very unique because they have a seal in them. I'm using a blue one, which you can buy on the Instant Pot website. And um, the reason for that is I have more than one seal. I use, seals, they're made out of silicone and they can absorb, well, I won't say they can, they will absorb odor. And um, it's kind of a surprising thing for most people to find out that their seal stinks. Um, you know, you do have to wash it and soak it in water. And I recommend having two seals. So I have a blue one and a red one. And the blue one is what I use for uh, desserts, sweet dishes, um, you know, things that are, I want to stay neutral in flavor, applesauce, that sort of thing. And then the red one is what I call my spicy ring. And then the red one is for, you know, curry and, you know, pulled pork with all that spice and stuff like that. And I do wash them and I do run them through the dishwasher. And there's a bazillion <laughs> um, methods that people have come up with to clean these ceiling rings. Um, some of them work, some of them work for some people, some of them don't. What I found is that as long as I have two and I use one for sweet and one for spicy, then I don't have a problem. The other thing, just jumping ahead a little bit, is when you store your lid, don't store it on the pot because then what that does is that restricts any air from getting to the ring. And so what I do is I just put it on upside down like this and that's how I store my pot. And this is always exposed to air. And I don't have a problem with my home smelling. And trust me, I have several instant pots. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the ceiling ring. And let's go ahead and look at how to take it off and put it in. Okay, because it's really important. If this isn't in properly, then your pot won't seal at pressure. So you can just kind of pull it out. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and pull it all the way out. Okay, so it has a little groove in the middle and then it has this extruded part here. In your lid, you have, you'll see this little track, right, that runs around. They're same on, the, on either side, so you can put it in this way or this way, it doesn't matter. And when you get it in there, you're gonna wanna just get an, one edge of it and shove it down in there. You see how I'm shoving it down in there? Because that groove, that's where this metal piece goes in. So then I just push it and I just go all along. I like that little satisfying click <laughs> and that lets me know that it got right down in there. Okay, this one's folded a little bit, no big deal. You just push it. Okay, and then I just do this and I run my fingers all the way around it and I take a quick peek and I go, yep, it's in there. So that's great. You'll see this, it kind of moves. And what that is, is that's your little pin and it's like a float valve because it floats until the pot comes to pressure, then it pops up. And when the pot loses pressure or you, know, you release the pressure, it goes down. And this is your steam release knob. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little while. And then under here, this is called an anti-block shield. Sometimes I can get it off with my bare hands. I get my fingernail under there. 
there we go and then you pop it off and then so what this does is because when the steam comes out of the pot it comes out through here mostly well you don't want chunks of food clogging that up a clogged pressure cooker is not a good thing so this little anti-block shield just keeps food particles and then you just snap it on there and it's all good to go these can discolor a little bit i haven't um, done the stainless cleaner on mine but you can get some stainless steel cleaner called barkeeper's friend they have a powder and a liquid version and then you just clean it and this will be all shiny and new but i'm not going to worry about that right now okay so you have your handle here which is great heed the warnings on your sticker this metal part here and here gets super hot and you don't ever want to touch this okay i think that's why they give you such a big generous handle okay so we'll just take a quick look here you have a display panel and your display panel excuse me has all these different presets and everything and all the different buttons we're only going to talk about a couple of the buttons today and i have another video that goes more in depth on the buttons so you can go look at that every pot comes with a pot <laughs> so what we really call this is this is the stainless steel inner liner and you'll always have that in no matter what when you're cooking okay and that's the basic rundown of it some uh, pots have a condensation cup on the back mine is supposed to but it fell off and i don't know where it ended up going but it goes right here let's see i might even have another one on another pot that i can show you oh yeah here's one obviously they're not that crucial sometimes i get stuff in the condensation cup and sometimes i don't but it looks like this so if you see this little thing all you have to do there's two tabs well, i guess it's on this side and they just fit right over it this is for a bigger pot so that's why it's not fitting but it just lives like that and then when water comes down the channel there's a little hole right here and then it goes in there just check it once in a while in case there was some liquid in there because if you don't ever check it or rinse it out it can get a little funky maybe even a little moldy nobody wants that okay so why don't you go ahead and get yourself a cup of water i'm gonna go get myself a cup of water and let's start the water test it's pretty easy so let's get started with the actual water test now you're going to take that cup of water and remember if you have an eight quart pot use two cups of water and you're going to make sure that your stainless inner liner is in the housing you never want to put anything inside because you've got your little heating element down there so always make sure that you have your silver lining, okay? So just pour in your cup of water. So let's put the lid on now. And it's pretty easy once you do it once or twice. You're just gonna wanna line up this really wide part here with the wide part on the other side of the housing. Your model might have an arrow and on this model, you can see it's right here, right there. And there's also an arrow on the housing. So all you do is you're going to line up those two arrows, okay? And it'll sing you a little song. And then you're going to turn it clockwise, just until it sits in there. Now it isn't locked, you can still move it freely. But this way now you know that your lid is on. After you get the lid on, you're going to want to put the steam release knob in the ceiling position. And that's this right here. Some people call it a vent, but I just call it a knob since it really is a knob. This is very wobbly and you can see it comes off very easily. And this is where the actual steam shoots out of when you release pressure. So there's a little silicone piece and it fits on there, okay? So when it's turned all the way counterclockwise, this is the venting position. And that means that there's no way the pot can seal because it's open. If you close it, 
which means you're turning it clockwise just until it stops. There's no click or anything, it just stops. That's the sealing position. And then that's where you want to put it. Whenever you're cooking something, that uh, pressure needs to build in order to cook. And that's most of the things if you're going to have the lid on. Okay, so sealing and then venting. And I'll show you more of that when we actually do it. But since we're just starting out, we're just going to set this to the sealing position. Now that we have the vent sealed, it's time to actually start the cooking process. And so what we're doing today is we're going to pressure cook. This uh, water test, you know, is to make sure that the pressure is actually going to build and stay pressurized in your pot. Okay, so you have a button down here in the lower right of your display panel and it's called pressure cook. There are some models that have a button called manual and you just need to look at your pot and see if that's the one that you have. In this case, this one has a pressure cook button. So I'm going to press it and it's going to default to the last time that I used, which happens to be two minutes. If I want to change that, I have about 10 seconds to do so using the plus or the minus button. Okay, so you can go up or down. At this point too, you can also toggle between high and low pressure by using the pressure level button. On some models, there's an adjust button, but we're gonna keep it on high pressure and we're just gonna do a two minute test. And as soon as you have that set, it'll wait a second and then it'll beep to let you know it. There it goes. It's letting you know that it got the instructions. It's ready to rock and roll, okay? So now what's happening at this point is the heating element that you saw on the bottom of the pot, it's going to heat up the contents that are in there and then the steam is going to build because the water is getting hot, right? So after the steam builds, it's going to get to a point where it creates pressure in there in that sealed environment. And then um, once it does that, the pin on the lid will pop up to show you that the pot has come to pressure. And as soon as it starts to do that, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So now you just saw that the pin popped up. I don't think I could have timed that any better. <laughs> uh, normally what will happen is steam will come out of here as it's building pressure. And then this little valve will kind of start wiggle in and rocking back and forth because it's trying to um, pop up from the pressure. And then after this pin pops up, you know that your pot is um, almost fully at pressure. It's at pressure, but the unit will beep when it actually hits full pressure. And I hope that makes sense. Now some of the older models don't beep when they reach full pressure. Just look for this to pop up. And then on your display panel, it will still say on just for a few more minutes until it really does build up to the full amount of pressure. Then it will switch to the time that we chose. And if you remember, we chose two minutes, so it will change to two minutes very shortly. And then it will count down from there as the time goes by. I'm going to release the pressure now. And to do that, I just move the steam release knob from the sealing position to the venting position. Now we're looking at it from the back of the pot, so it's going to be the opposite from the other way. But it might scare you a little bit the first time you do it. See, oops, <laughs> we got a little bit on here. Um, so what you're going to do is you're just going to turn it, and then this is going to hiss, and there's going to be a lot of steam that comes out, and um, if it's too much or it scares you, you can always put it back to the sealing position. But the reason that's the reason why this is so loose. It's because you don't really want tension on this, okay? So I'm gonna move the camera position just a little bit so I don't get it wet, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now I'm a safe distance away. And if the first time you're not comfortable putting your finger near here, because you don't ever wanna put your finger up above when the steam's coming out because Obviously, it is hot steam. You can use a spoon, a handle, a brush, anything you want, and then you can just use that. And if you have pets, be forewarned that it might scare them a little bit. And you're gonna also be watching for the pin 
to drop back down. And that's really important because as soon as the pin drops back down, then that releases the lock on the lid and it is then safe to open up your pressure cooker. You never wanna to try to force your pressure cooker open if that pin is up, if there's any pressure left in the pot. If the lid does not open very easily, then you need to wait for the pot to cool down. And as the pot cools down, then the pressure um, will stop building and it'll start to decrease and dissipate. And um, I've never had that happen to me where I couldn't open the lid. I always wait for the pin to drop, but just in case you just wanna be safe. It can take a few minutes for the pressure to all come out of the pot. It depends on how large of a pot you are using and how full your pot is, mainly with liquid. Uh, when you only have about a cup of liquid, it doesn't usually take that long. But if you have a big pot of soup, it could take a lot longer. And also always refer to the recipe you're using as to whether or not you're going to do an immediate quick release or do a natural release, which again, I'll explain that in just a moment. Okay, so the pin is down and that means that it is safe to open up the pot now. And like I said, it should just open with ease. See? Okay, so I'm gonna turn it around now so you can see the display panel. So now that the pressure is released and the pin in the lid has dropped down, uh, before I open it, I just wanted to show you what happens after pressure cooking. So whether or not you release the pressure quickly, which means immediately after it's done pressure cooking, or if you wait a while, um, if you don't turn the pot off, then this is what's going to happen. So what this is doing right now is it's counting up in minutes. And what this is letting you know is, hey, I'm done pressure cooking, and this is how long I've been sitting here. So since we released the pressure, and even if we hadn't released the pressure, but since the pressure cooking cycle was done, it's been sitting here for four minutes so far. Now some of my recipes are going to call for a 10 minute natural release, or a 15 minute, or maybe even only a five minute. And so what that means is after you're done pressure cooking, you don't let the pressure out. You let it just sit there and this will count up. Let's say if I wanted you to do a five minute natural release on ribs or something like that. As soon as that hits the five, now you know you can go up and release your pressure. We just did a five minute natural release. If I wanted you to do a full natural release, what that means is let this sit there regardless of how many minutes until the pin in the lid drops of its own accord. All right. And then if I want you to do what we call a quick release, then that means as soon as this is done pressure cooking, don't let it count up immediately. Let the pressure out. And so the pin can drop because as it's sitting here, it's still very hot in there and the food is still cooking. So there are many types of foods that you don't want to overcook, pasta, vegetables, and um, certain delicate cuts of meat and things like that. But like I said, always look at your recipe, and if you get your recipe from a trusted source, then they should have tested the recipe multiple times to be able to give you an accurate timing, okay? So then all you have to do, um, oh, and before I go on, let me just mention, so this has a keep warm button, and so what this means is that, let's say that your food is in here, it's naturally releasing, you're good to go, but you don't really wanna get to it yet. You have guests coming over later and you just want it to stay warm. So what this will do is as soon as your temperature drops of the food drops below about 140 degrees, this will kick on and keep the food warm, okay? Now, it doesn't matter if this is on or not, when you're doing only like a 10 minute natural release because the food isn't gonna get cold enough for it to really cook, uh, kick on. And then what you wanna do is just turn off the pot you know, when you're all done with it and you can just hit cancel. Your model might say off, uh, they're all different. If you don't want the keep warm to come on, um, when you hit pressure cook, you can just turn it off and then it won't kick into a keep warm 
and it won't count up. It will just go off as soon as this cooking cycle is done. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and open it up and you can see this lovely hot water that we made. Okay. So here you can get a really clear view of the arrow and the other arrow right down here. I don't know if you can see that one or not. And you're really only going to turn it counterclockwise and you can't go any further, but you can see at least how the arrows match up. And then that's how you know you can lift it off. Sometimes they stick a little bit. It's not a big deal. You can have hot water or whatever. And also that hot water can drain in here. You have a condensation cup on some of the models on the back of the unit that will take that extra water. It'll run down this little channel and it'll just go in that pot or in the cup, excuse me. Now the Lux model does not have this, but the Duos um, and the Ultra and the Pluses, the Novas and some of these other models of Instant Pot do have this little notch right in the handle. And that's very, very handy for letting your lid sit there. And you can do it on either side, okay? And there we have our hot water. And so we are completing our water test. So what this showed us is that, A, the pot is working great. It came up to pressure, the pin popped up, the pin went down, everything worked normal, the buttons worked, it's all good. The other thing that this does, in my opinion, is it gives you a little bit of a, a comfort with using a pressure cooker. If you're not familiar with them, or maybe the last one you used was your grandma's pressure cooker, then you know sometimes there's a little bit of fear there. And what this does is this can help you, you know, be more familiar with how this works. There's a lot of safety built in, and this sucker is really sturdy <laughs> and I've never once had an issue. I have several pots. I've been doing this for several years and uh, it's one of my favorite things. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today to learn how to do the water test. Go to simplyhappyfoodie.com and I have some beginner recipes there for you and I have lots of other recipes too. Um, all in all, there's over 400 and something recipes on my site Granted, they're not all Instant Pot. Some are Crock Pot and other recipes, but the majority of them are Instant Pot. So I think you'll find something good to make. And please leave me a comment and let me know how you liked this video. Let me know if you have any questions, uh, something I may have skipped over uh, in this video, and I will definitely uh, do my best to answer that for you. Take care. Bye-bye.